Imagine living in a world where every step you take, every move you make, someone is watching. Sounds like a dystopian future, right? But ask yourself, are we not already there? The inception of surveillance as a governmental tool can be traced back to the Cold War era. In a time of extreme political tension and the looming threat of nuclear war, the need for intelligence and security was at an all-time high. The purpose of surveillance during this period was primarily for national security and prevention of potential threats. The government's eyes were always watching, always vigilant, and always ready to act. But how was this surveillance conducted? It started with simple wiretaps, listening in on phone conversations, and spying on potential threats. It was a game of shadows and secrets, a cat-and-mouse chase between nations. The intention was to keep the peace to ensure that no one stepped out of line, to maintain a delicate balance. However, as time went on, the methods of surveillance began to evolve. The transition from physical to digital brought about a new era of intelligence gathering. The advancement in technology allowed for more sophisticated methods of surveillance. Wiretaps turned into email interceptions, physical spying turned into digital tracking. The world was becoming smaller, and the reach of surveillance was growing wider. The rise of the digital age brought with it new challenges and new opportunities for surveillance. With the introduction of the internet, social media and smartphones, the amount of information available for collection was staggering. Everything from your location to your personal preferences could be tracked and monitored. This was a gold mine for intelligence agencies, providing them with unprecedented access to personal data. But as we embrace this new era of technology and convenience, we also opened the door to a new era of surveillance. As technology advanced, so did the methods of surveillance, leading us into an era where privacy started to become a luxury. And this, dear listeners, is where our journey into the world of global surveillance truly begins. The digital revolution was a game changer, bringing an unprecedented level of convenience. But at what cost? As we stepped into the 21st century, we also entered an era of digital transformation. The internet, once a luxury, became a necessity. With the proliferation of digital platforms, our lives took a turn towards the virtual world. Our interactions, transactions, and even our identities began to exist in digital spaces. But here's the catch. These digital platforms, from social media networks to e-commerce websites, began collecting our data. Every click, every like, every purchase, every search. It all became data points. As we reveled in the convenience of the digital age, we were unknowingly feeding this data-hungry beast. So you may ask, what's the big deal about data? Well, data is power. It's the key to understanding our behaviors, our preferences, our vulnerabilities. And this power can be, and has been, exploited. These platforms claim to use our data to enhance user experience, to personalize content, to improve services. But there's a flip side to this coin. Our data is also used to manipulate our choices, to influence our decisions, to control our behavior. And what about our privacy? Well, privacy as we knew it seems to be a concept of the past. Our digital footprints are tracked, our online activities monitored, our personal information commodified. The digital age, it seems, has ushered in an era of surveillance. We've traded our privacy for convenience. We've given away our control for comfort. Our lives, our identities have become digital commodities. Have you ever wondered who is watching you as you scroll through your feed? Who is analyzing your data as you make an online purchase? Who is tracking your location as you use your favorite app? The truth is, in this digital age, surveillance is not just a possibility, it's a reality. We live in a world where our screens watch us as much as we watch them. As our lives became more digital, our privacy started to fade away. In today's world, surveillance is not just limited to a country or a region, it's a global phenomenon. As our world becomes more digitally connected, the reach of surveillance has expanded beyond borders, beyond nations. It's a spider's web stretching across continents, intertwining societies, cultures, and people. We're all caught in it, in one way or another whether we're aware of it or not. In the past, surveillance was a tool used by the governments to maintain law and order, to ensure the safety of their people. But with the advent of technology, the very concept of surveillance has morphed into something far more complex and far-reaching. It's no longer just about security, it's about control, influence and sometimes even manipulation. Governments around the world are using surveillance in ways that were unimaginable a few decades ago. From tracking the movements of potential threats to monitoring the activities of ordinary citizens, surveillance is pervasive. Some might argue that this is necessary for national security, to combat terrorism and crime. But where do we draw the line between security and invasion of privacy? 
In countries like China, a sophisticated surveillance system is being used to monitor the activities of its citizens, tracking their every move, their every transaction. In the United States, agencies like the NSA have been accused of mass surveillance, monitoring phone calls and internet activities of millions of people. Russia, Iran, North Korea, the list goes on, but it's not just the governments, corporations are in on it too. With the rise of social media and digital platforms, our personal data is being collected, analyzed and used in ways we can't even begin to comprehend. We're not just consumers anymore, we're the product. Our likes, dislikes, habits, preferences, every click, every post, every search, it's all being monitored, recorded, sold. In this rapidly shrinking world, the question isn't who's watching us. The question is who isn't. We're all entangled in this web of global surveillance. In this global village, everyone is watching everyone else. With technology advancing at an exponential rate, what does the future hold for surveillance? Does it herald the arrival of the mark of the beast? There's no denying it. We're at the cusp of a technological revolution. Artificial intelligence, facial recognition, and biometric data collection are becoming the new norm. But as these technologies advance, so does the potential for comprehensive surveillance, the likes of which we've never seen before. Consider the capabilities of artificial intelligence. It's no longer just about computers that can play chess. We're talking about systems that can analyze vast amounts of data in the blink of an eye, identify patterns, and make predictions. These AI systems could potentially monitor every online interaction, every digital footprint, every piece of data we leave behind. We're rapidly approaching a future where our every move could be watched, analyzed, and cataloged. And then there's facial recognition technology. It's already being used in some parts of the world to identify individuals in crowded places or to track down criminals. But what if it's used for more than that? What if it's used to track every citizen every minute of the day, regardless of whether they've committed a crime or not? Even more futuristic and perhaps more unsettling is the idea of thought reading technology. This may sound like science fiction but research is already underway into decoding brain signals and turning them into readable information. Imagine a world where not even your thoughts are private. These advancements in surveillance technology are alarmingly similar to the biblical prophecy of the mark of the beast, where every individual is marked and monitored. It's a theory that has been around for centuries, and as we edge closer to a reality where these technologies could be commonplace, the theory gains more traction. This isn't to say that these technologies are inherently bad, they have the potential to revolutionize our world in positive ways. But the question remains, how much of our privacy are we willing to sacrifice in the name of progress? The future of surveillance is uncertain and ominous, adding fuel to the fire of the mark of the beast theory. As we continue to trade our privacy for convenience, where do we draw the line? Indeed, this question underpins the heart of the rising concerns about privacy in this age of global surveillance. Every day to a greater or lesser degree, we willingly hand over bits and pieces of our lives to both governments and corporations. We do this in the name of convenience, efficiency and a sense of security. But at what cost? The cost, unfortunately, is often our privacy, our personal data, our habits, our preferences, our very identities are being scrutinized, analyzed and often exploited sometimes without our knowledge or consent. This is not just a simple trade-off anymore. It's a critical issue that's reshaping the fabric of our societies, and it's time we take it seriously. So, how do we protect our privacy in this brave new world? There are no easy answers, but there are steps we can take. We can educate ourselves about the technologies we use and their implications. We can demand transparency from companies about how they use our data and insist on laws that protect our rights. But the responsibility doesn't solely rest on our shoulders. Governments and corporations play a pivotal role too. Governments should ensure that privacy laws are robust and enforced, balancing the needs for security and privacy. Corporations on the other hand, need to be more transparent about their data usage and provide users with real choices about how their information is used. The path ahead is challenging no doubt. It's a path that requires constant vigilance, ongoing dialogue, and a commitment to uphold the values that define us as free individuals. In this global surveillance era the fight for privacy is more important than ever. The question remains, will we heed the call, or continue to sleepwalk into a surveillance state?